My uh, learned adversary has dealt with what I suppose one would call the performative aspect of the matter in hand. <laughs> He's not here to hear me. Um, I shall uh, try and deal with the informative. Um, he had, of course, the advantage of four strings. I was going to bring my viola, which, is, which was Beethoven's instrument, but... Um, aha! <laughs> I'm back, and I heard. Yeah. <laughs> And, but um, Beethoven never wrote anything for viola. And if I had the time, which I don't, I would tell you why, because it'll take 50 minutes of psychoanalysis to explain why, um, in, in very modern terms, Beethoven turned against the viola. He was quite fond of the cello. And he was quite fond of the cello, Beethoven, and indeed of cellists. One of his best friends was a man called Count Zmeskal, who was a senior civil servant who stole very high quality government paper for Beethoven to write on and he also tried to get Beethoven to accompany him on brothel crawls <laughs> unsuccessfully but these cellists know how to live um, I must just quickly say that I've given a recital on Beethoven's own cello in the Beethoven house in Bonn with the great musician Sir Anders Schiff mm. and um, it was an honour but sorry Go allegedly on. his own cello <laughs> unless it was stolen from Her Majesty's stationery office. Um, at the risk of lowering the tone, um, I'd just like to deal with the philosophical matter for a second. There is a debate between um, Walter Benjamin and Gershom Scholem as to which is more important. Is it more important to be original, for an artist to be original or transmissible? Is it more important to create something that is unprecedented or something that can be passed on. And here we have the schism, the great division between Bach and Beethoven. Bach is a monumental figure in music. Um, he is the repository of all the music that has come before him, translated into a way that can be handed forward. There is hardly any composer who is more quoted by his successors, from Haydn to Shostakovich, than Johann Sebastian Bach. There is hardly any composer who is quoted less by his successors than Ludwig van Beethoven. Beethoven's originality was daunting. Everything he did was new. He didn't. Bach, like all composers of his period, quoted from himself, quoted from others, lifted whole concertos of Vivaldi and put them out under his own name with a different solo instrument. Um, <laughs> It was, come on, it was the 18th century, it's what you did. Beethoven is in the 19th century. Beethoven is looking consistently forward in everything that he does, everything from the very first moment that he sets, forth, sets foot in Vienna is totally and completely new. He comes to Vienna a few months after Mozart's died, and everybody says, oh, he's a talented boy, he could be the next Mozart. Beethoven says, no. Do not mistake me for anyone else. I'd like to ask Mishka just to play us a little bit of the Opus 10, number two. It's the fifth piano sonata. It's written for a Mrs. Brown. You heard it. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was one of Mrs. Brown's boys. Um, it's written for a Mrs. Brown who was the wife of the head of intelligence at the Russian embassy. So she's also Mrs. Putin. Um, <laughs> And it is one of the ways in which Beethoven says to the world, I am Beethoven, there is no other. <laughs> 